I've come today to the Southampton Old Cemetery. Southampton is on the south coast of the UK and a very important port. As we come through the main gate, on the right hand side is an absolute forest of crosses. Certainly when this part of the cemetery was used, crosses were the order of the day. Scattered throughout this section of the graveyard are a number of the Commonwealth war graves. This is Corporal H. Walker, South Lancashire Regiment, 1914, aged 36. A short distance behind him is Private R. Carden, Devonshire Regiment, 1917, no age listed. An ornate cross on this one, and at the bottom of the stone it says Robert Henry, brackets Harry, the beloved husband of Eliza Pierce. At the top of this one we've got the rope and an anchor and the words safe in harbour and it says in loving memory of my dear sister Jane Leach who was the beloved wife of William Leach and that was in 1913. Assistant Baker, E. A. Glasspool, H. M. H. S. Asturias. That's uh, His Majesty's hospital ship, Asturias. Asturias was a regular uh, liner, which was uh, damaged at the beginning of the war, and then requisitioned uh, to become a hospital ship. And uh, after the war was over, she was converted to a cruise liner. We have an angel here with the wings wide open. Uh, sadly, she seems to have lost uh, parts of her arms. A delightful image here of a young girl and in her frock, which she's holding up, she's collecting flowers. At the base of the monument, we read that this is Edith Emily who died aged seven years, uh, looks like 1918. This one here is a particularly poignant and sad one. The first stone mentions Captain R. Ross White, Staff Captain 49th Infantry Brigade, 16th Irish Division. Um, and three other names underneath. But alongside it is this cross with a ceremonial sword draped over it. And at the bottom it tells us in memory of the three sons of Captain and Mrs. Page. Arthur, killed in action at Potigies, 1916, age 32. Ernest killed in action at Ronsoy, 1918. And on the bottom step we've got Cyril, died at Wimmeroo, 1917, from wounds received in action. Three sons killed in the First World War, fighting for their country. A war grave here to Second Lieutenant J.R. Folk. Royal Flying Corps, 1917, age 19, 
We don't see so many with the Royal Flying Corps on. That was the predecessor of the Royal Air Force. It changed in March 1918 to become the Royal Air Force. But to see them inscribed with the Royal Flying Corps is not so common. Immediately behind we have Donald McLachlan, son of R.I. Turnbull, killed in the South African War 1900. And if we go down to the bottom of the stone, we've got Robert, who died 1944, for our wounds received in 42 when serving with the MEF. So he died two years after he received his wounds. Nearby is one to Thomas Edwin, the husband of Nellie Place, eldest son of Captain T.G. Place of Guernsey, who died at sea through enemy action, 1918-48. This is an unusual design. Uh, we have the cross at the top and a large solid block of stone at the bottom, and we have this sort of almost a crown effect uh, arching around the base. Quite unusual. A very solid tomb here and on this side it says Maria Victoria Lemon dying 1906 and on the other side rather in the shade we read Sir James Lemon Mayor of Southampton 1891-92 Close by the main entrance we have this new memorial dedicated to the many souls buried in this cemetery who sadly have no grave markers. And it is a fact of life that uh, in most cemeteries there are far more people buried without grave markers, often in common graves where multiple people were put, than there are that left stones memorials behind. I had to smile at this one. This slab mounted on four balls. It looks for the life of me like a, a very large skateboard. Quite one of the largest tombs you'll see. Very elaborately carved. And the family name is Bull. This one here has been built in rather soft stone, so it's degrading quite badly. On top, that was actually an upturned boat, and you can just see a little bit of a chain coming out from underneath it. But um, the frost has got into the soft stone. A pair of graves here to the family of Lefeuve. The second one is there. And if we see down in front of it, they've put a plaque which uh, says that this is the grave of John Emilius Lefeuve, Deputy Provincial Grand Master, uh, Masonic Province. Now you will probably hear the sound of machinery in the background. I've just been having a talk to the chap who's one of the friends of the cemetery and they try and keep pathways clear, but that, that does involve the use of streaming machines. So we can certainly excuse the noise. This one here is known as the Three Graces. Uh, there are three sides to it and each side shows a separate happy looking young lady. There's one. There's a second one on this side. And this is on the third side. The modern plaque placed in front of the memorial tells us a Grade 2 listed monument and it's to Richard Pierce, Hannah, his wife, and some other names. And that the sculptor was Richard Cockle Lucas. tall one 
is to Frederick Russell, 19 years, Vicar of St. Luke's in Southampton. He died in 1872. And round the corner is another one of these rather unusual ones. The slab mounted on four balls. Uh, two smaller ones at the front edge, larger ones at the back to give it a slight slope. This is a really interesting graveyard. I had read in reviews that it's uh, well worth a visit and I can certainly underline that. Southampton Old Cemetery. Very interesting bit of sculpting here with the anchor and on the front of the grave it says Andrew Simon Lamb. The inscription here tells us a little bit more about the person. This is Andrew Lamb. For well nigh 40 years, the first superintendent engineer of the Peninsula and Oriental Steam Navigation Company. He was born at Leith in 1803 and died in Southampton in 1881. Now the Peninsula and Oriental Steam is now known as the P&O Company but it has none of the old grandeur. It's used for a cruise liner and it's used for a ferry company. But back in these days, this was the, one of the grand companies that ran steamers uh, across the Atlantic and to various other destinations. A very important company in its day, rather less so now. This is a very large cemetery and it takes a lot of labour by volunteers to try and keep the undergrowth down. Here they haven't been able to manage that. It's now got brambles growing up all around the stones and pretty impossible to reach the stones. But what the volunteers are doing is a grand job. Um, many areas are clear and the stones can be reached. This stone has a, something a little bit different much more the sort of thing I like. It's to Edward Bist, who died in 1870. And the engraving at the top of the stone is this wonderful old steam engine. But the stone doesn't say what his connection was with the railways. But anyway, that a, makes a nice change from cherubs and peace doves and ivy a steam engine on your gravestone. Larger than those surrounding it is one here. This one reads Ethel Berta, wife of Hector Young, and then Hector Young who was Mayor of Southampton 1929 to 1930. Tilting at a bit of an angle this is a little bit more decorated than most of the stones. And the surname on there is Matthews. Almost completely hidden by the trees and very much in the shade is this one to D. MacDonald, Abel Seaman, HMS Dolphin, who died in 1918. One here, head and shoulders above everything around it. Not easy to read the inscription. Seems that the surname is probably Watson. Another one here, standing taller than the rest. The inscription is to the memory of Captain E. C. Kemp the officers, engineers and crew of the Royal Mail Steam Packet company ship Duro who perished at sea 1882.
close by is this uh, glorious flowing figure of an angel with the wings spread. At the base the inscription, difficult to read inscription, says George Harding. Well, I'm filming this graveyard in April, just over the Easter weekend. And the bluebells are just an absolute picture. It's difficult to find anything more peaceful and beautiful than this country spot with just a bird song. A very grand memorial at this uh, junction of the paths. High up in the memorial we see the word Y and an image of a steamship. Around the other side we have another steam yacht and the name Rhone. And on the front face it says in memory of the officers and crew of the Royal Mail steamships Rhone and Y. There's a very small stone here with the initials H-E-H, -E -H, 1884 to 1940. The very simple stones like this are often from the Society of Friends, the Quakers. They don't believe in having any excess information on the markers. And somebody has placed this against that stone in memory of all the super mariners who sacrifices in the air raids of the 24th and 26th of September 1940 contributed to the peaceful lives we have enjoyed to date. This one's completely in metal. There seems to be a little figure at the top there. Can't quite make out what it's meant to be doing. But if there was an inscription, it's completely disappeared now. Uh, there is so much of interest here and uh, I would heartily recommend a visit. It's a wonderful graveyard to walk around and you could spend a very long time here. I'm going to call it a day at this point, but do come. Till the next time.